and, and um, I put Timothy at the, and then the IP address, whatever it is, or if I'm, whatever the machine is. And that, that normally gets me, but then I, I have to know the, 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 the key that, for that machine in order to get on. And that's the whole thing that always throws me. And, um, Usually it offers to save your key, though. I mean, it, it offers... Yeah, but if the key's on the other machine, and you're on this machine... You mean the IP address? Yeah. Yeah, so so if I was trying to get into your box, like you set up an account, and then trying to get into your machine, I know your IP address because you tell me it. Yeah. And then well, yeah. you have to have the the, the just key. just a password, a yeah, regular password. password. A after you do the password, <coughs> it should send you back a key or pop up a box and Same ask connect. if you want to accept this. Uh, right. Think key, so you do that, and then you should be in. Right. That's all it should take. But it's the server. It doesn't want to do that. <laughs> well, sometimes if you have a different IP address in relationship to the to domain and no. subdomain in the, in the uh, known host file, then you have to change that. Yeah, that's the one thing I run into. You just yeah. got to go in there and edit it. Yeah, it tells you what line you just. So it says what line it is. Go delete that line. And yeah, but it's, it seems like every time I do it, I have to redo it again. So well, I've had must have changed. Yeah. And I don't know why it does it. But it's it should only be it should only be an issue if, for instance, the host key like if you have your installation on that same computer at that same IP address. It shouldn't really be there. Should be a conflict unless the SSH key or the SSH server part changed. And the only reason that usually will change is you reinstall it. Right, yeah. And I think I might have, but it seems like I have to do this all the time, and it's like frustrating. I, mean, I kind of wish there was an easy way to do it. Because occasionally I want, my wife's on my box, and I want to get into, because there's some files on, the, on that box that I want to get into, but she's sitting on the computer, and I can't, I can say, like, get off, I want to, when I'm sitting at the computer and I know that I can have access to that box. Well, if the server's configured right, it should just offer the clients a key and then you would accept that key and then that's the key it uses to encrypt both ends of the message after that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's my understanding of SSH and I'm by no means an expert. Right. Because I did a lot, like a, some... <coughs> A little research on SSH, and it said SSH was started in like 1995, I think, when um, a guy from Finland, his school got kind of attacked, so he did the SSH protocol. He wanted to make Telnet secure. Yeah. Right. Which is it, totally odd to hear. Yeah. It's, <laughs> well, what, from what I've heard, it's oh, no, does I mean, the clear text for the passwords. Yeah. yeah. And everything else too. The entire everything is clear text. Your entire communications and the password. So, like, when when um, Unix was around in nineteen the nineteen eighties and seventies, it was all clear text. Probably. So the password if you, yeah. Sure. <laughs> so if you you could just. Well, well, but then there wasn't a lot of networking going on. That's right. It was yeah. a direct connection. I would uh, dial uh, right to that person on the dial. You know? probably, had the, probably the passwords were in there in clear text, too. I don't know that. We were there at the time. All, the, all the terminals were serial. They had a direct line to the computer anyway. Every, every, every terminal in the building had a serial line, and nobody could see what was going on in any of the serial line anyway. So there really wasn't much need to secure it. Most of terminals, too. Oh, but once it became like a network, like the, the yeah. TCIP, then and then you're passing packets that other people can sniff. Then all the problems really started. Okay. So there wasn't really much need for it till really the 1990s. Even in the early 90s, I was mostly dialing up computers directly on a modem. 
my my roommates were, were horrified. I had a couple roommates back then. I moved in. They got a four hundred dollar telephone bill the first month. They said, "No, no, this can't be right." And I said, "Well, yeah, okay, okay. That's my call. That's my call. All my clients, I'm calling long distance, you know, and I'm dialing out to California to the SCO company to get SCO Unix patches and stuff and pulling them in using UUCP and stuff like that. I'm doing it late at night and stuff." But it's still adding up their phone bill. So a four hundred dollar phone bill for me was not unusual in the early nineties. How many? I remember having four hundred baud or something like that. Uh, it was yeah twenty four hundred baud back at that time, yeah. and then I thought it was really I was really up there. I had a ninety six hundred baud modem in the early nineties, and that was really a cool thing to have. But I mean, it, it was even six, I used to even fifty six fifty four k or something. Commodore sixty four at three hundred baud yep. to do my assignments. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> It was, it was like so much better than that. Yeah, 110 baud teletype. <laughs> yeah, that, my first modem was 110 baud. We couldn't do anything with it. I called another guy who had one too, and we connected him over the telephone line, and we typed hello back and forth about 10 times, and then he said, "Well, there's got to be something more you can do with this thing." Hmm. Bulletin boards had, hadn't been invented. One of the first computer club meetings I was at, we dialed in to Ward Christensen's bulletin board down in Chicago, which was the first one, and we used the teletype. There were no programs on there or anything, but there was a message board. You could leave messages for other computer clubs around the country and stuff. But that was the first time I even connected. That was 75 or 76 we did that. Is there anything you want to, would anybody want to show anything on SSH or? Well, I found a, um, a neat link. It's, well, you can see it. It's, it has everything that. Oh yeah, the O'Reilly book. I think I've got that book in my basement. I should have brought it. I, I went online and I went like, "Oh, this is cool." Somebody, I don't know who put it online, but it's like online that you can check it out. So if anybody wants, oh, that book. just um, do the link up there, and you can get to it. Um, and it goes into all the inside SSH. Um, I I thought it was like a really cool. It is actually a paperback book. You can buy that. It's been out for 10 years or longer. Maybe What's that's the, why it's online, but it's like, I don't, I, I just. 10 years. February 2001. 2001, okay. There you go. Years, yeah. So, I don't know who this, but it says O'Reilly Networking. I don't know what. That's one of the better. Yeah. Publishers. Yeah, I think. So. Most Telnet programs will do SSH for you now, and like I say, I've never run into what you're talking about with SSH. Uh, there's a lot of trouble configuring a server to do SSH, although it's much easier. It used to be a real pain so in the butt to, com to configure a server to do it, but with a client, I've never had a problem. No, but I mean, if I have my lap, my desktop, mm -hmm. like this, and I want to connect to it, it's that's the server. Right, and I'm the client. You're, you're the client, yeah, because you're using the, the the terminal emulator program to so, call into the server. So what I need, and normally it just says app get installed SSH. And then you but there is usually some configuration involved, no matter which version of Linux you have. <coughs> you have to configure it and set up how you're going to issue keys and all that kind of stuff. Okay. You have to set up a public key, a private key, all that. That's on the server end. I mean, the, the computer going to do it. We're in the middle of SSH. Right? Oh, okay. Because I had some questions on it, and, and um, we didn't have a somebody to talk about it. Or if somebody wants to do a meeting next, may do. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, if you you want to talk a little bit about SSH. Or, 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 you know a little bit about this. Well, a little bit. I mean, honestly, I set it up like a long time ago and haven't really had to touch it a whole lot since then. Yeah, and I use it occasionally. I spend I spend hours every day using really? SSH. So, yeah. so you're pretty good. I, I do too. I mean, but but no, you just you you log in with the telnet well, session. I do more than that. Oh, you do. Okay. Yeah, I, I SSH my machine and that connection stays up 24/7 almost. That's right. Yeah. So once your connection's up, then <coughs> it's just like your terminal in their system. Any, has anybody heard of? Can we show some stuff, or no? I, I, you, you want to show some? Stuff? Yeah, I mean, if it's a um, here I'll, I can. I'll let you sit here and you can. I mean, I can. 
Well, it actually chairs. might be easier, although. Yeah, okay. I said, well, you can just sit in a chair here or something. Yeah, you can just sit in. Or just yeah. wait. Or I can just grab. Oh, here's the mouse. Because part of the thing is to get keys and stuff like that, too. Uh, yeah, if you want to put it on a little further. I can flip over to the hangover whenever you want. There's really not a lot to see there. And there's nobody else in it outside our group yet, so. No, sorry. Display configuration yeah, thing to come up. Am I going to have to turn off the board? Yeah. You guys do work with W? Not for a long time. I've put it on machines a couple times ago, but like four or five years ago. Okay. Now, I'm going to go What are you trying to do? Well, de install a Debian package from the command line. Okay. I went to Google Plus. Here's a possibility. Like, uh, okay. Uh, you can make a. Okay, you know basically I can do like this. H, uh, whoops, not cap locks. Tim, could we move that screen over to the right a little bit and turn this thing because that light up there shining right on the screen okay. is just wiping the video right out. That's much better. Yeah, right in between those two lights. Okay. Turn that over a little bit. Oh, that's much better. That's much yeah. better. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks. Oh yeah, I know that one. But space, space, space. See, see, this is the, the file. part I get. The okay, so I'm logged in at my at home now. Okay. Cool. Okay. It's a file. That's real system. exciting, of course. Okay. <laughs> but, I imagine. Okay, I can also do things like say L. Who's out of the time? I didn't know she was a I mean, to install a file. I'm redirecting, it's kind of going backwards. I'm redirecting a port from my computer at home to here. And I'm porting it to port 8080 on 127.0.0.1. Okay? And. But how will it find it? It's well, I'm not done yet. It's 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 192.168.100.1.80. Now, besides that, okay. Now that's working. Now I got to bring it uh, to my web browser over there. So now, if I put in, 
on you. And I normally can't type, so it's not unusual. That's my Time Warner cable modem at home. Cool. Okay. Now, people, I know a lot of people do this kind of thing real regularly in saying, like, they got a whole surveillance system inside of a business. Instead of redirecting the site to the Internet where God only knows who's going to get into it. Right. You just have to have a SSH, you know, somebody who wants to get into it has to have an SS, an account inside the system. And, uh, you know, and so you can redirect anything. You can go back the other way, too. That's what the dash R, there's a dash R thing, which I've never used, but you can redirect things back the other way. So I could be here and get the information, or like, at home. But it, if my wife turned on the computer, I can help this. But if you don't know the IP address of the... If you don't know the like if I don't know my IP address at well, home. Well, as you notice, I have it in, in the DNS at work. <laughs> so, you know, I had my, if you saw me log it in there, you know, let's say, hey, this all just works, you know. Just another. Did that work for you? And that could be anything. Right. You can tunnel anything. And you can add whole strings of those to get different things. Right. You can just keep adding on to that. No, I, I did um, minus X, or the big X. And well, that's so you do a graphical thing, yeah. in which cases that do, that would work, but I'll tell you, it tends to be... Uh, Lagging? Yeah, it tends to be not very responsive. If I would run off the clock or something, it would be okay, but if you try to actually run something for real, unless you're, like, in the, within the local network, then you're no big deal. Then it's just Well, because I did, yeah, I did frozen bubbles at home. <laughs> And it was kind of funny because the speakers was, they were getting, um, the sound was coming from the other speakers, but I had it on the laptop. It was pretty cool. It's a plug-in. Okay, I'm going to go. I'll show you this thing. I can't get into the thing unless I do it. Okay. Where's my... Something I'm not understand what's going on, here. but okay. Say so if I want to get out, okay, I want to get out of here. So I'm back here again. Then I want to do um, SSH dash keygen. Okay. And and I can give it a file name or not. If I do uh I'm gonna do and I'm not gonna give any password. If if you really wanted to be really secure, then you'd make a nice big one pass passphrase. Then a person's gonna have to have the password and the key. This is being generated. Okay, to get in, and there, you know, if you really want to be secure, that makes it really challenging the, for the somebody to get in. The, the passphrase can be like the the rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane. Yes, like yes. That. So, but so in order for somebody to get into the system, you'll have to have both. Okay. And I'm not going to put any on there because I want to show something else. And. Uh, Although there's an SSH, let's see, where am I? I don't know what the name of that thing is. It's hard to I'm winging it here. I didn't I think I want to do it. Okay, it is called this test. Okay. SSH uh, dash copy ID to. Now, what is 
this do? This is copying my key that I just generated and copying it over to the other computer. Okay. Uh, oops. Forget that. And I think it's probably going to be that. I guess I can put. Okay. Oops, test that. Oh, my God. I normally don't do this for just the, the normal straight thing. I, it's not like I've never done this before. Okay, let's just let's do the lazy way out. So I won't. SSHQJ. Let's just do this one. I'm just going to do a straight one. That'll be a default one. It goes into that SSH directory. Okay. And uh, this should definitely work. But we'll just now we got to log in. Okay. Now, if I do my SSH again. I logged in without putting a password in. Well, that's neat. Okay. Now, obviously, that's dangerous. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, okay. Obviously, that's dangerous, but in some cases, you, it's like if you have two. If you got something with a script on a script or something like that, or you know. It, or, or for example, okay, here was the next thing I was going to say. Okay. Now, I can say, okay, oops, I'm going to get it back out of here again. Okay, make a little script, say, that have that. And what I'm going to do, tar. John, can you, like, <coughs> can you, like, maximize that window or anything? Oh, make the text a little bigger, maybe? Yeah, that, yeah, that would yeah. definitely yeah. help. Yeah. Even with zooming on the camera, I can hardly read it. Uh, let's see. It's in there someplace. Upper right-hand corner, you can. Well, I can make it bigger. You like text bigger. Yeah. I, don't, I, I assume you'd like, actually, the text bigger. Yeah, the text bigger, yeah. Profile. I'm sure it's in there someplace. Uh, it's appearance, I think. It is. Now I should get at least into the, the, the dealable with size. Okay. CX. And by the way, when I hit that enter, it actually was, it actually tried to run it on the other end. So, but hey, so. <laughs> screens or something. Okay. And then, uh, I think this is right. I normally to So Any great script people? That should ring right, right? Well, yeah, C. I normally, a lot of times, I'll do a pipe, but it'd be silly to do a, a zip, you know. I could do a DD or something on the other side, but it should be bringing the tar files back over to this side. Okay, yeah. I'm, zip, I'm creating a tar file, tar file at home and copying it here. That's what I'm supposed to do. Okay, obviously. Oh! Is it X or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. XVF? Okay, yeah, yeah. XVF? How about that? XVZ. Oh, it's, uh, you want uh, F and then a dash. Oh! Uh, you're putting the standard out. 
then the directory name that you're. Well, I, I want the actual tar to be created to standard out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you do tar yeah. whatever other flags f space dash space then. Oh, directory. it's f dash. Yeah. That's for file, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So put it in f dash. Yep. And then whatever file directory path is, et cetera, you want to tar up. I used to use that like every day. No. No. Oh, let's do something just stupid. Like I'm, I'm obviously, uh, the basic idea certainly works. Right. But yeah. let's just say something. Okay. Do that. Oh, you want to like get the car off? Oops. Okay. Tell everybody's awake here. Somebody other than me. Okay, oh. and then I could day, you know, direct that to uh, test uh, or something. Yeah. Well, it's obviously kind of rolled over the edge of the screen here, but anyhow, you can see it dead. <laughs> <laughs> but but to so see it is is there there's possibilities of doing the same thing. Uh, it's probably a screen adjustment issue. Yeah, it's not making any difference. It's, yeah, let me just it's, it's the the projector it's the resolution, oh, okay. not the position of the back okay. device. You let me just make it so it's a quite full screen. <laughs> yeah, pull it toward the middle so it's between the two lights up there, and the light doesn't shine on it there. No, uh, he, he can move the, the... Oh, okay. Oh. <coughs> just move it. In the darker way. area. There you go. Yeah, that's right. darker. Yeah, that's Ooh, better. Yeah. Okay. But but the thing is, is you could do it either way. You know, you could make a script to pull something off, you know, send something off to your remote thing, do backup, do whatever. I did a thing, I remember I did a thing where it was, there got to have been a better way, but I had a thing where I had a... A program where uh, people were running like uh, only you know had a lot of people about a dozen some people and I had different but I had to get into this one computer to do something special on this one computer and I had but everybody had to be in as a unique person okay okay well so but I had to start a script remotely I had to literally go over there to figure out which ones are running you know, so I'd go figure out which ones were running and then allocate, come up to the next, you know, pick a user that wasn't running so that the, you know, so that the script would go over, grab the little list of who was running on the thing <laughs> and then do it and then, you know, send them off to, you know, so I'd get a new user. Okay. You know, so, you know, or, you know, there's a lot of possibilities. Right. <clears throat> And then, uh, let me see, what else we got here? Uh, okay, here's another well, how, one. But the, how, if you, how do you know the IP, or, like if I was here at work, which is a, a, a fixed IP, my home IP can change. Go sign up to one of these things like no IP dot yeah, whatever it is. No, they're all free. Dyn not free. DNS. Dyn DNS is free. There's a lot of free. Oh, no, it's a whole bunch of them. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. D yeah, Dyn DNS is free. They have a free one. you got to be careful that you pick the free one. Don't get into the paid one. And then you can have something that runs on your computer that automatically updates. And there's a fair IP. chance that if you pick the right one, uh, most a lot of these uh, firewalls and various little router things have provisions for some of these dynamic services. DNS services, it will automatically, so you just click the thing in your router and it will, and you say, okay, you have to give, you have to configure it with, you know, who, you're, who it is and then some information about you so that it knows how to, how to set it in. Yeah. And it'll just, it'll just work. Yeah. I mean, I've always had problems. I don't, maybe you guys do, don't. Otherwise, you have to develop a very good memory for IP addresses. I set up Dyn DNS all the time for customers, so I, I just set one up a, a few weeks ago and it was free. So, see, uh, with my wife's on, I could go into the computer and 
And here's a okay. Here's so another. Me, it's I was gonna say you can set up logging. Okay, in like you saw the bad thing. Looks kind of hazardous. Okay, like what I just did with the no password. I have a thing here. This is an example of something with a little edited out of it. But if you in the there's a thing about in the uh, in the authorized key file dot ssh authorized key. This whole thing is that's in part that I'm concerned with is it's separated here from here to here. This is one line, okay? And what it's got is what we have of a thing where from our database server has to grab a, uh, a CSV file out of one of our HR people's thing, directory, and you don't want anybody to just get in there. Right. Okay. So what we got is, is I've got one of these keys set on from the database server into this person's, this particular HR person's .ssh configuration. And what I've got is there, you can add here, you can say, okay, from. It only can, has to be either from this address or this address. So it says your DB test or ADVDB. And then you put in what the command is. You explicitly put in the command. And it was, the, you know, this is a secure copy. And it copies this particular file to the database server. So. If some weird person gets in there, finds a key, whatever, that's all they can do, you know? <laughs> that's the only thing that key will let them do. And it does it without any password, of course, because it's being learned from a cron job or something, okay? On the, uh, I assume, on the, uh, on the database server. But they say if somebody could get into, if somebody managed to get the key and whatever, that they have to be on one of those two hosts, and it can only run that. And there's other weird things that go in that thing too. That's where we use use that for our copy, right? Yes. That's what I thought. Right. Yeah, this is on copies and files. The users side. This uh, configuration? Yes. It's so when the one of those two servers connects, does it run that? Right. SPC you actually so it? on the on the database server, there's something like says uh, they basically it says basically what's on that line, you know, SFDP and uh, you know SFDP dash. I can't remember if it's exactly that way, but it's, uh, it might be something, I can't remember, I had to kind of play with that a little bit. But so this you can actually put anything else on the line, you know, they can type anything else on your line, but it'll do that. <laughs> okay. But, but when when the database server connects, does it, does it automatically run that SCP command, or does it just restrict them to that's the only command it'll recognize? It's the only command it can be run. Okay. And you, but you still have to kind of run, you put it in the command line, yes. I think it. I have to look. I think it is as secure as copy, whatever. Uh -huh. But the thing is, is but if you go in there to tell it to copy something else, you won't do it. I use it in one of my PHP programs so that the user can open the file on one system and copy it to another system. For, um, See, that's what I, I wanted to do. But it like, and it, I always, doing that operation. It seems like I don't file. use it that much. Like so that, that, every single, that's the limit all the time. The and it's like, and when I do, it's kind of like, oh, it's good. Well, I mean, there, I mean these things, I don't remember exactly. i got to look it out. Yeah. But, you know, but there's a whole you know, ton of little things in there. <laughs> right. It's sort of like and, you know, for, security. It's the big yeah, thing yeah, is the port redirection. You use it scripts. You can pipe things to or from it, you know. For, and that can be very useful. Um, you know, you can do all kinds of little things. Uh, so you're piping to or from the SSH. You're actually 
essentially piping across the net to the other server. Secure. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like, okay, let's say, okay, this is one thing I did a bit ago. I could have done. Can you yeah. uh, restrict it only an SSH to only a one person or one one computer can only can get into it or like one specific computer to get into it? Well, you could have just one. I yeah. think you might be able to put just a particular user too. I'm not sure. I don't know that. I don't remember. You have to look in the. And, and if anybody wants uh, copies of the SSH. Okay, so here I am. Okay, there, I mean, this is more situation where I'm actually typing from into GZIP. GZIP is running locally. Yeah, GZIP is running locally. And the LS is on remote. Yes. Okay. Yes. Not the most efficient thing. But right, but, but it shows you what you can do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Typing across between machines. Right. Okay. If you're going the other way, it would make sense to have the G, you know. Oh, yeah, is it the first and then the thing go across? But you could have... Right, I could make my tar file. Matter of fact, that's why I keep on thinking. I think, I, you know, I could make my tar file or whatever on this side and just pipe it to, you know, to the other end. Now, yeah. now this could be something that could... Happen once in a and once in a while, or a certain time. a cron job or something like that. Uh, I say you got to be careful when you think about it. The thing is, having anything that doesn't require a password is there's possibilities of bad things. Okay. <laughs> I I think in the way I've got it too is that I've got for that one job too. I, at least I've got the I have literally the identity, the, the key file is someplace else in some fairly obscure location to boot. And you, I have the, the key file has to be specified too to get it to go. But again, that's a little obscurity is not really give you a lot for security, you know, but as challenges. <laughs> but even if they did, they should only be able to copy that one file. Which in this case you'd say, well, first of all, in order to do that, they probably had to get root access into the computer in the first place, in which case you'd say, okay, you know. Now, is it is it pretty easy to find out if somebody's like got into into your system, or like I know you can either in W or who, and it tells you who's out on. Well, you look at, you know, if you actually monitor it. I know there are programs, I know I don't, but there's, there are programs that will, you know, like it's, if they log in, it's got to be, it goes into the, there's an authorization file, you know, there, there's a logs of who has logged Cause, in. Because I was at home and I was into my, went into my um, cable mode, no, it was my, um, my router. And it was had a, a name on it that I don't know. Maybe somebody got in wirelessly, but they probably hacked my WPA password. But I was like, this. So I denied them. This time. I don't know how I got on. They, they, they might not have gotten on actually if you had wireless. They would try to assign them an IP address, even though they hadn't typed in a web uh, code. Okay. It, it would still assign them the IP address. It just wouldn't allow them in on there unless they had the web. Oh, so we, okay. Our church router picks up a lot of people that just every time somebody walks by our router with their cell phone, my router <laughs> table is always full, and I've got all my 250 IP addresses are gone in the system because it's a sign of here. So what I had to do is cut the the, the least time down on the IP addresses down to a couple hours, so that you know it, it doesn't fill up my DHCP table. That's why I think it's like, okay. And the only problem with that is then, of course, every time I walk by and I want to use my phone, I know what the web code is. I've got to reinitialize myself. It's forgotten who I am again. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Right. So, anyhow, it's those are the things I particularly have found useful. Address. You can just send these people. Can have well, I do. I put the you MAC know, address. Well, my laptop, but my MAC address. I haven't put the MAC address of the shit. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, because I say the. 
uh, and then a lot of times you even forget a lot of time the deals for doing the SSH for direction because <laughs> you get that thing, like I was showing you that router page, I've got things, I've got like in some other actual offices where I've got like the deal where the DSL modem has has some access where I can check the status of it and like that. Well, I'm not going to, you know, set up a special tunnel so I can get to it. I mean, you know, as a normal plot deal, I mean, that's kind of silliness. Uh, you know, you got a lot of internal stuff, you know, or, you know, for a home thing, you know, you can have your stuff and put whatever, you know. You know yeah, it's up to your imagination. You could say, well, you know, I can't send email through my home computer. Well, I can, you can make a port tunnel and run port 25 to it and be able to, you know, run it into your, send your email <laughs> into your home computer, you know. It's, they can, they can want to block it all they want. Has anybody ever heard of Hamachi? No. Yeah, I've heard of it. It's, it's, it's Hamachi is like, <clears throat> It, it's like, a, I don't know how to describe it, it's like instant messenger that if somebody is on the, the you know, instant messenger, you know they're online. But it's like a network too, so you can connect to other computers once they, so you can have this network that you can connect to from, um, from somewhere else, but it's it's actually it was a really nice system. Somebody bought it, and now it's in the log, log me in. Log, yeah. yeah, it's a really good because you can you can go. It, it's a zero configuration virtual private network. Yeah, and, and so it's a what, VPN. It's, yeah, it doesn't need any configuration on either end. I right, and, and I thought, why doesn't somebody make a plugin for like MSN or? Um, G talk or something like that, that that gets the information, encrypts it. So when you're talking, when you ha when they're in the network, so it it kind of does the same. You, you can. I mean, Windows servers. I've set up VPNs on Windows servers for a long time, and you have to you VPN into the thing. You just log into it. And the same thing, you can get routers. The Cisco and Linksys routers, even a lot of the cheap ones have. You can get one with VPN built right into it. So you get some client software you install on your computer, and then it automatically connects to the router and stuff for you pretty much. So no matter where you are, and you have your own virtual private network, you have your own virtual private tunnel, but so you can do Telnet or anything and nobody can see what you're doing because everything is encrypted. Oh, here's the line where in my, uh, here, the authorized keys file, this is at home, my home computer. When I put that key in there so it would work, that's that line. That's one line, okay? And uh, as I say, there's more arguments. It's not obvious. You do read the man page or something, the obscure stuff. Uh, you know, and if I, uh, since I probably don't want anybody to be able to do this anymore, you know, I just, you know, it's. Oh, you to re regenerate some keys. So. No, no, that's the thing that gives authority for me to sign log in there without a password. Oh, you I just want that. Yeah. I'd rather not. Well, yeah. you can still even if you even after you've already generated your keys, the keys on here. Well, right. I got, got the, your, the your private keys public on and there. private keys here, but I removed the public key from the remote end. Oh, okay. So yeah. it's not considered an authorized key anymore. Right. And you so, can always still put a password I put on it back later again. on, too. Or I can do it all over or something, yes. Yeah, I can so add So adding a passphrase is always good if you if you want to remember it. That's the, right. most, yeah. that's the most secure, is to have the key and the and passphrase. It. <laughs> because then you have to have the key and the passphrase. And the, the hackers on the internet can try passwords to hell freezes over it. They will never get in because there will be no password that will work. You can, you can actually have it so there is no password, actually. Well, and another thing... Or make it so horrible that <laughs> nobody's ever going to hit it. Uh, another thing you can do is you can run an SSH agent for your, uh, for your keys. Like when I log into my machine at home, you know, I, I, when I fire it up, it comes up to just the normal, you know, uh, GNOME login screen. So I type my regular name and password, log in. And then the first thing that comes up when my desktop shows up is a, a dialogue asking for a <coughs> passphrase for my keys. 
for SSH. And so S I have just an SSH agent, as it's called, running in the background that keeps my keys. It, it handles all the work of doing the handshaking and decrypting of the keys. Yeah. Without I've been meaning to, to look into that because I know there's agents for, the for GNOME or KDE for doing that. Yeah. There, there's some generic ones. Um, but What's the GNOME one? Seahorse, I think? Yeah. Is the GNOME one? Yeah. But I think that, uh, yeah, so that's, again, it saves a lot of hassle. Yeah, especially that way. You and at that point, after you've logged it, you've done that, then you can pretty you can just SSH wherever without any passwords. Right. Yeah, I just bring up terminal, SSH my server, and it's in. And and I don't and because I've already authenticated through the SSH agent locally. Okay. Yeah. Because that's another big section in the SSH <laughs> on this SSH agent stuff. I recall. Remember vaguely yes. seeing that? <laughs> well, you can do all sorts of other stuff with an agent. You can have an SSH agent, like, pass along the key details over the link. Yes. So, like, if I had m multiple machines on a remote network, I could SSH, a SSH from my desktop to the first remote machine. Then if I have the agent running over the SSH link, I can, from that first remote machine, SSH to a second remote machine, and it'll use my key details from my desktop to, you know, to authenticate me. Oh, that's kind of cool. Right. But it's not always recommended to do that, because that way if this machine, my desktop machine, gets, uh, gets rooted, then that gives them everything I can access along the way. Oh, so it's better not to have it. Well, uh, well, I just keep, separate. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't have a ton of machines, right? And so for me, and it's even easy there, to if you've got a good, if, it's, if they're using, if they have your uh, your key, you know, your key file is actually properly encrypted with a reasonably decent passphrase with a good passphrase on there, that should be still, even if they do root your machine. They have a fighting chance yeah, of can't get any. It's, it's better. Yeah, I mean, you have a fighting chance of not getting any. You're, you're balancing the, the security versus the convenience. You know, having. Well, I'd say if you have a really good passphrase and a good encryption system, you got a fighting chance. Oh yeah. So, well, anybody else? They have beat this bit out here. There are a lot of different other systems that use SSH, right? Huh? A lot of other uh, components that use SSH. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, well, as I say, it's a, like a little Swiss Army knife type of thing. It's a, like a little component, you know, like a lot of other Unix-type components where you can... Uh, That's one thing very well. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, it also... Okay. Well, I guess I just mentioned that too is that there's also like the uh, the here what else we got here okay no of course I got rid of my key here but there there's a secure copy but then there's a SFTP which is also running through that And now I can do, it's kind of like FTP, but kind of basic. Yeah, I, yeah, you have to know the, You know, this is the uh, well, stuff on this end. There's local LS, you know, just my files over here. And you do get and put, you know, just kind of like it was FTP. And, uh, but it's running through the SSH. Yeah, so then there's secure copy, which is... Yeah. Or, I've used well, then there's other things like, yeah, you can do, do our sync, but that's getting a whole other but topic. I always forget who, which one's which. Send me, send me to the, you know, the secure right. copy. But the secure so copy, the, so the SFDP is all part of the one package, so it really is the same topic. Oh, <laughs> oh secure shell and secure copy. Right. It's all part of the same package. The, the SFT, now, the word S, the SFTP is used for many other packages, but this one is part of this package. 
the word, I think the there, are, there are many different, I think, I suspect, I'm pretty sure there are a couple, there are quite a few different implementations of call it SF equally. And I don't think they're necessarily compatible with the fact they all use, you know, encryption. <laughs> Is it standard that most people use uh, 4.2 for that? For SSH? That's the standard. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can also do stuff, and I've got, uh, you know, I, I do stuff like, you know, it's been complained here, if I put in port 1022, uh, oops, well, maybe I don't have it there. Maybe I don't have it enabled. Okay, but if I can do Oh, of course. Now that's what I get all the time, connection routine and stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, if I may, my, my computer is at home, you know, on my own home network, is it okay to do telnet? Mm, to do what? If you're on your own home network, yeah, 192 whatever address, yeah. Yeah, yeah. sure. Unless somebody else is in your router and is also active, logged in, and, you know, they can get in through your router and they're on too, they could sniff the packets for you, but I, mean, it's, I, I wouldn't buy it. I do well, tell them that on my own machine. In this case, I don't know if I'm any bothered logging in, but this is, I have, yeah, this is one of our offices, and I, I have, port 22 gets me the main server, 1022 gets me the firewall, <laughs> into, the, into the main, into the router, okay? So, so you can, you can set it. You know, you can run it on a different port. Now, in real reality, on the firewall, it's really running port 22, but I'm kind of, no, there I'm kind of redirecting the ports port to. You know, I've heard of port, port knocking, which is like it's closed, and you have to do a certain sequence of. Like, <laughs> yeah, you have to do a certain little thing where you have to connect in a certain, try to connect in a certain way, and then it will. And then it'll open it for a certain period of time. Yeah. Yeah. I heard, yeah, you don't want to have broken ports. That's not fun. Nice job. I mean, I'll just unplug it, unplug it too, but of course it's better for useful. Surely <laughs> that. You asked before, I do run some of my customers, they have their SSH on port uh, 21012 or whatever. I, I use one of the high num numbered ports that people are looking at. And if, and if somebody does do check all the ports, they run a port scan on your machine, they're going to see what services are answering on each port anyway, so it doesn't make a whole lot of difference if you do bother to change the name. It's just that a, a ca casual average person trying to see if your server is going to respond on port 22 probably wouldn't get anything. And that's only because in some... Well, there's a lot there. of bots out there trying, you know, trying random password, user <coughs> IDs and passwords. There are, and that's why I've done that in a few it's cases. It's pretty massive. With so servers, I, I got hit a lot. I've got <laughs> rules on my, all of mine, where it, uh, I've got rate limiting on it. That pretty well slows them down. You know, you give them, you can only get like, you know, three connections per minute, and then you get locked out until the rate falls below that, mm -hmm. say, or something like that. And since they're usually those guys are just hammering, yeah, you know, well, they just say so locked out until they, until they give up. <laughs> and once it's done, done they can't you block IP addresses? Sure. Well, you can, you, but through your router, lock, you lock can, yourself yeah. out if you aren't yeah. careful. Well, yeah. you know, if you have a, a, like a, your own IP address, it's going like the hotel does. 
he introduced. I don't know if now don't do that because then somebody inside the motel can't get backwards in through through uh, Dine DNS or something like that. If you wanted to be like super, super secure or just at home, you could just make it so that only certain IP addresses that you assign set to each machine you can only do stuff and then nobody in the world can do anything but you. Yeah, that's true. A lot of that's more easily handled in the router though than I think you were talking the operating system. You would do that in your router really. That's right. In fact, I even do it with a Mac address. <coughs> so that, I mean, there's no way. <laughs> I guess you could hack the Mac. Well, you only use that internally, though. You can't really. That's you have right. to be able to directly reach it. That's, that's what I mean. Yeah. Well, version 6, it's going to be easier to track or uh, find out who the hackers are, right? Because they'll be able to backtrace the. With IP like, version 6? Yeah, isn't it? Not good? necessarily. Yeah, I don't think so. It'll make it, it'll definitely, I mean, one, personally, there's one thing they say that it'll help will be that right now they just scan, they just do, they just scan ports. They just, and since most IP addresses are, are in use, uh, you know, it's pretty efficient. You can start with 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 and scan every port on that. Just scan everything, you know, so you just start scanning. 60, well, You'll find there's somebody on the ports, planet has got most of them. Yeah. Whereas when you go to IP version 6, there are so many IP addresses that it's not going to be very efficient to just scan ports. You know, I mean, just to blindly scan them, scan them, you know, unless you, I mean, as if they won't have lists, you know. But, but just, <laughs> yeah. for right now, they have to bother. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. Okay.